Okay, this is going to be a video about my high voltage power supply that I'm building as an outrigger power supply for my Johnson Thunderbolt. The Johnson Thunderbolt's been uh, restored to a great amount. Uh, the one difference is I'm taking the power supply off the chassis so that this thing will weigh 120 pounds, but instead like 65 pounds. So we got most of this working on everything and got the dial all squared away. So here's the high voltage power supply. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn on AC power. Transformers wound for 120 volt primary. So that's the reason we're using 120 volts. And what we have on the power supply is we have a line voltage present, a control voltage on, soft start and high voltage with an actual meter to read the bleeder resistor and determine what the high voltage is. I also have a running hour meter in here. And what I'm using is about a six volt power supply as my control. The high voltage on this power supply will be switched on and off uh, as I transmit. I have two solid state relays in the unit, which are shown in the other photographs. Uh, those soft start relays are solid state. And as soon as I turn on the transmitter, I have an eight ohm resistor feeding the transformer's primary, and that's a horse of a transformer. And then uh, after the high voltage starts to build up on the bleeder, then it'll switch the resistor out and be full power. So there's an 8 ohm resistor in the primary circuit to allow that to have a soft start. Then we got some onboard capacitors, a bunch of 5 kV units, a total of uh, 6 microfarads. And the whole top of the chassis is low voltage, so there's no risk of anything in here. You can touch it all. The reason for that is I'm going to have a cabinet with a flip-up door and there'll be a high voltage fuse for the output. I'm using a microwave 2500 volt fuse. Actually I think it's a 5000 volt fuse but I don't have that much. So here we go. I'm turning on the AC. Master switch is enabled. That means I got line voltage available. Now when I turn on the control power supply back here you'll see that that comes on and then you'll see the soft start turn on, but it's only a quarter of a second and then high voltage becomes available. This light's actually reading across the bleeder resistor so it actually sees the high voltage. Here we go. That was pretty quick. And you can see the high voltage is 2400 volts. Basically the meter's reading 100 to 1 of the actual power. So let me just turn off the AC and everything should go away. All right, and we still got the control voltage on. No line voltage, no soft start, no high voltage. We'll turn it on again, and you'll see how fast it goes. Listen for the click, and you can watch the meter. So as soon as I go to transmit, this will come on, and when I turn off the transmit, it'll quit. So the bleeder fell, uh, drops down pretty quick, and the bleeder also uh, charges up pretty quick. So you can actually see the operation of the power supply. One more time, I'm going to turn it on. And you can see it's like a half a second turn on. This way I don't have a lot of dissipation wasted. And we turn off the control. <clears throat> and then the master goes off. That's a local turn off, so I can actually force the thing to be off when I'm doing work. The Thunderbolt over here is going to have a connector on the back that feeds the AC to it. To the power supply that is. Now these bleeders right here, these bleeders were dissipating 275 watts in the original design. They will not be connected again. I do not need that much load. 275 watts in a bleeder, which was a continuous load, uh, as long as the power was on, that's just crazy. So I've got another bleeder on there and it'll be uh, for safety, so I have a bleeder on the power supply and a, beater, a bleeder on the chassis. They're independent. And then that way when you turn on the high voltage, the uh, rig's ready to run and when you shut it off, everything goes quiet. It's going to cut down uh, losses, I'm sure, between the transformer and the rectifiers and everything else. You're probably talking a total of 350 watts wasted in high voltage uh, idling on the bleeder. And what we have down here is the new capacitor bank to 
back up the capacity within the unit. We got like 20, 25 microfarads on the chassis, and then on the power supply we have another six. So that ought to be a pretty stiff power source to do what we want to do. It's a full wave uh, center tap power transformer. And that's how it goes. So it's working and we're tickled with it. N4MQ, y'all have a good day. Bye.